Sucas de Grassi. I raced for uh, Mahindra Racing in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. I won the championship here in 2017. Did a normal race driver career from go-karting all the way to F1. Sport in general can help a lot with the communications uh, about the right topics and about the right uh, things to do regard, regarding sustainability or climate change. Sport is the main drive behind social media today. Before it was politicians, before that was businessmen. Now I think if you take the biggest celebrities in Instagram, Twitter, they're all like Cristiano Ronaldo has 600 million followers and so on. So there's a, it's a huge platform uh, for these celebrities from sport to put the put the right message forward and they have a lot of power. For example, Cristiano Ronaldo takes the Coca-Cola out of his table, the Coca-Cola shares plunge the next day. So they have a lot of power and all this comes through uh, the access to the public, the hundreds of millions of followers. I don't think sport's leading uh, the conversation, but again, I think sport has a huge impact. Um, and if this is coordinated in the right way and the message putting forward is a truthful, maybe not the easiest or maybe not the most beautiful, but a truthful one that people can actually follow and learn and understand the problem a little bit more. And then therefore making their own changes and making pressure on their government to do those changes, I think can be a very powerful, because a very powerful force. So the communication and the understanding of general public about the topic is also very, very important. And sport can definitely help uh, that with the hundreds of millions of people, for billions of people following it every year. And then coming back to the point of being on a, on a high performance sport, racing is probably one of the only sports in the world that this technology that actually we are developing to win races, ultimately, but this technology will allow for cars in the future to achieve this goal of being lighter, more, more powerful, more fun, more uh, safer, and at the same time more sustainable. And this is what we need to achieve. Even if it's Formula One or Formula E, there are technologies being developed all the time. In football, there is no technology with the ball and with the shoes and the grass. There's nothing really being done, but because the public is so huge, you can communicate in the right way. Formula E, no. The motor the, that you hear now, that is on my car being turned, Mahindra will use this technology to make all of their new electric cars much more sustainable in the future. So actually there's a lot of technology going around racing that is actually used uh, in, in conventional cars. And there is many examples, even the seat belt, mirrors, all were invented in race cars and later being deployed in commercial vehicles. Formula E being net zero since inception, puts Formula E in a very, very exclusive club of maybe a few sports that actually were able not only to drive sustainability forward, but also mitigated anything that is unavailable to attain today. Formula E, the cars are electric, so they, they are the only ones with zero emissions. And this technology is being massively adopted. UK, there is a goal, I think 2035 in London, uh, not to sell more any combustion cars, Europe the same, the whole world is changing. When we started Formula E, there were only 300,000 cars, uh, electrics being sold around the world. Now it's more than 3 million. So the, the, the evolution has been exponential and the, the, this will continue to grow until EVs dominate the market in late 2030s. These two extreme using cherry pick data to come up with a silver bullet explanation or a very concise explanation about everything that is happening around the world. This for me is what's annoying me the most. Very few people have a balanced, pragmatic discussion about what's actually good, what is bad, what are the pros. Like everything is life, there is pros and cons in every single decision you make. We actually had a, a guy jumping, on, jumping in on the, on, the, on the track in Berlin protesting against combustion car. And we were like, okay, we are also protesting against combustion yeah. car. We're racing electric cars. So we didn't know what the guys were doing there, actually. Uh, it was a bit funny to, to see, to say, okay, we are on your side. We also don't like combustion cars. Uh, you don't need to protest 
on Formula E tracks. Um, but I kind of understand the stop oil, extinction rebellion things, but I don't agree that's the way forward. I think the way forward, again, if you want to change uh, the world, the, the best thing you can do is to vote for competent people in government that will lead to the right policies, that will lead to the best value on the long term. Throwing, throwing orange powder in a Van Gogh or blocking London's traffic for the whole day and saying, yeah, we demand that there is no more oil, it's not the right way. It does not work like this. If we stop oil completely today, billions of people die of hunger. It's, I understand the urgency as well, and we are trying to make it as fast as we can. But the best way people can do, of course, on, the, on a normal day, is having the normal common sense of trying not to use a single-use plastic, uh, try to, instead of driving a three-ton car around, ride your bicycle or, 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 a, or a scooter or walk. You know, try to have a... a if, you, if, if you buy something, look at the total lifetime as assessment of that product. Um, if you want, try to consume more products locally, the normal stuff. But this by itself will help to mitigate climate change, but it won't solve it. And there is no silver bullet. And that's why I think it's so difficult, because it's a, it's a, it's a very complicated thing, not only in general, but also geographically. Different countries have different solutions. And for example, UK, you cannot have a solar powered UK. <laughs> I don't know, three quarters of the summer were cloudy and rainy. You can just, you can't. But in Brazil, you can. So in the Sahara Desert, you can. So it depends. But you have a lot of wind, offshore wind in the UK. So you can have more offshore wind. So different solutions for different countries as well. And it's a very complicated matter. Although I try to put forward the ideas that are very most balanced and possible, I'm constantly attacked by this a lot. So I have a lot of hate messages on social media. So if I go now and I say that I don't like Greta and I don't like Donald Trump because there is pros and cons, I will be attacked by the Trump supporters and by the Greta support. So I will have like 200 hate messages on my account. Even if I explain why, people don't want to know why. People are much simpler to take a side. And... Because again, it goes to the extremism. It goes to saying that school strikes for climate. Kids should be in school. We should put pressure, but they don't should do strikes for climate. Climate needs to be sorted out with technology, with pragmatism and with policies and so on. So not Greta, not Donald Trump. Most of people, they want to, he to read the headlines and have the news there. And if the headlines is not grabbing attention, they will never click it. So the media has been, at least in the past maybe 10, 15 years, had been progressively coming up with more clickbait headlines, like climate change will, I don't know, kill us all. And this again, at the same time, it creates more clicks because people want an impactful story generates more click, more clicks. Sometimes it puts the wrong message, especially for the younger generation. So I think the duty of the media is to transmit as best as they can the truth and the science behind the matter without being too much political and try to be as much as possible a pragmatic message, especially very respected media like Channel 4 to come up with the right, um, with the truth uh, and in a pragmatic way. First, we need to stop the negativity around climate change. That's something that I think is, needs to be balanced, but we need to inspire the new generation to actually work towards a change, to work towards innovation and technology that actually will make a change for the world. 
and not coming with a doomy and gloomy talk about the world is going to be unhabitable, that the crops will die, that it's not worth living. I think that's the wrong message, especially for the younger generation that follow us and listen to what we have to say. Mitigating fake news and doomy, gloomy talks about the, the climate, I think these are the main things that we can do as, a, uh, let's say, as a, a spokesperson towards a better, sustainable world. Um, so my, my advice, if I can give any, is to be excited about living in the best time that has ever existed for humankind. The, the past generations, our ancestors, only dreamt on a life that we have now. So although that the short-term situation could look gloomy and bad and without purpose, there are so many problems to solve. There is so much stuff to do. And there's so many opportunities to do, if you do it the right way, that they should be excited to wake up and use their energy, use their knowledge to solve these problems and help humanity to progress. Mm -hmm.